Hi, Damien Braze with QA1. Today we're going to put our GM front pro coil kit on the 68 Chevelle. Kit comes with both springs, both shocks, thrust washers, mounting hardware. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get some anti-seize put on these, get them installed in the car with our optional thrust bearing kit. These are sold separately and replace the thrust washer. So we've got the hardware on here. We're going to put some anti-seize on the threads. This is going to prevent any galling on the aluminum and also make it easier to make ride height adjustments. First thing we want to do is get the factory shock out of the way. So we're going to remove the nut and the washers up here, get the bolts out of the lower, then with a the coil spring compressor we can compress the spring, separate the ball joints, get the factory spring out of there. Got the castle nut loosened up on the lower ball joint. Now I'm going to separate the tape around the ball joint before I put the coil spring compressor in. Once I get the spring compressor in there, compress the spring, completely disassemble the lower ball joint. The coil spring compressor they were trying to use wouldn't fit inside the coil, so instead we've taken a ratchet strap, tied it around the coil spring to the lower control arm. The ratchet strap is going to hold the spring in so we don't have to worry about it shooting out and taking out somebody's eye or worse. All right, now that the factory shock and spring are out of the car, we can assemble the spring on the shock, get it stuck back in there and get it put back together. Now in the 68 to 72A bodies, the springs ground flat on top. You can put it in there, it doesn't need to be indexed at all. Some springs do have a pigtail on them. That will need to be lined up in the spring pocket. So we can go ahead and put this in. Don't have to worry about changing anything. Now most GM cars use welded nuts on the inside of the control arm for the factory shock mounting bolts. These have already fallen off or been removed, but we do have to open these holes up to 3 8 from the stock 516s. Now I've raised the lower control arm up to the T-bar, put the bolts in, got them started. The T-bar does go on top of the control arm with our coilover kits, as opposed to the factory shock T-bar being mounted underneath. Now we've got the coilover kit in, ball joint reconnected, time to go ahead and set the ride height. Got our spanner wrench here, this is T114W. We've got another one that goes on the end of a 3 8 drive ratchet, T115W. Uh, once we get our ride height set, go ahead and reconnect our sway bar end link. We should be all set. For more information, check out our website or give us a call. <music>